place for it. He's alive. He's alive today. This is not a dead gospel. This is not a dead religion. This is a breathing, living relationship with Jesus that's alive. A real God coming down to real people today in a real way with real presence. Hallelujah. He's alive. We sing it out. He's alive. 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 to the King this morning. We say, Hail, Hail, Lion of Judah. We sing it out. Hail, Hail, Lion of Judah.
to the lion, the lion of Judah. So we sing. Cause our God is the lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before him. Our God is the lamb. Cause our God is the lamb, the lamb that was slain for the sin. chains and every knee will bow before Every knee, every knee will bow. Be- 
the sins of the world his blood breaks the chains as every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb every knee will bow before him every knee will bow every tongue confess that he is lord Every tongue confess. Oh, we say, my Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. It's all of my days. Sing it out. I want to praise the wonders of your mind.
Jesus, nothing compares, nothing compares. Just sing out your praises to him right now. He's so worthy. He's so good. He's so good. He's worthy of it all. He's worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You are worthy. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve, you deserve the glory. All the saints and angels, we sing. And all the saints and angels, they bow before your throne. All the elders cast their crowns before the Lamb of God and sing. Lift our hands this morning to the King. 
You are worthy of it all. Lift your hands up. If you're able to. For from you are all things. Lord, we lift our hands and up to you. And to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Father, thank you today. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You deserve all the glory. You deserve the glory. Just tell him in your own words. Jesus, thank you. Tell him. Thank him for your life. Thank him that you, you have breath today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for everything you did for us on the cross, Jesus. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for life. Thank you for life. Hallelujah. 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 Just so I want you to thank him all the way back into your seats. Take your battle places. We call them our battle stations. Worship is warfare. Worship leads the way to victory. Hallelujah. Sometimes you need a good shout, and you shout to God with a voice that triumphs and says, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I like to thank him ahead of time before I see the victory. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for, the things, the evidence of things not yet seen. And so we're just really grateful to have you here on this beautiful Resurrection Sunday. Pastor is going to be doing an awesome message this morning. And I just want to thank you for your faithfulness and tithes and offerings. We don't never make mention of that much. But there's buckets up here or out in the hallway. There's a drop box. And also next week we're going to do a special love offering for going for our mission trip. So if you'd like to sow above your ties to the mission trip in any way, we're really excited about it. Just put in the memo, mission trip, or you can give online. There's a tab section on our online giving for missions. And we're taking a trip to Nicaragua. Did I say it right? Nicaragua? Yeah, we're going. And so a team's going in um, August. And so we're believing God. we got to buy the tickets soon in the next couple of weeks. So we know that God is more than enough. Right? And we're going to go to a beautiful place. We'll tell you more about that later in the coming weeks. But I just want to drop that plug. Also, May 4th, I'm going to have a woman's event. I switch it to May 4th. And it's going to be spring into joy. And I'm telling you, God is going to do something in the house. It's going to be a Saturday morning. And I want you to let them get the word out. We also have women's Bible study that's doing the Holy Fire series on, on Tuesday. And there's a prayer every day. Monday through Friday here at this house is hot on fire at 6 30 in the morning every day if you want to get up and pray and also uh, lots more going on Wednesday night's powerful we're going we're going to be starting a van evangelist teams and a healing and deliverance teams and pastor come on up we're so excited this morning how many of you are first time at the river Yay, welcome. Oh, God bless you. We're so glad to have you there. I used to be really good at being a welcome packet and I'd, you know, almost bring a box of cookies to people and stuff like that. And over the years, I'm like, hey, if they want to be at the river, they're going to want to come whether I have gimmicks or not. You know, cups. We used to have cups that had chocolates in it and all that stuff. But we're so glad you're here. We just pray a blessing on you today that you'll be overflowed with his joy. And uh, we know that, uh, you know, you're, uh, you know what, you're the greatest greatest mouthpiece, the greatest church. You're the church, you know that, right? You guys need to get out there and let the people hear the gospel that Jesus heals, Jesus saves, and Jesus delivers. That's the gospel message. It's not complicated. People need to know about the Lord and that he can turn lives around. How many of your life has been turned around? You were in the gutter. And now you're in the utter, the uttermost, okay? God specializes taking people out of the gutter, and we had lots of gutters here at this place. This was a gutter place. This actually was a bowling alley, and you would bowl that way. Whew! And can you imagine how many people were in the gutter? Right down there where our kitchen is, the, where the kitchen is, where the pins would fall, and you would bowl here. It was called Tulip Lanes. I bowled here in the 70s pastor's office, and my office is where the bar was. So we got the new yep. wine divine there now. Yes! 
Yourself. Now it's full of the right spirit. Amen. Yeah, okay. Well, no other spirits here, okay? So, you know, God can specialize. Somebody needs to hear this today because I woke up and I heard that the stone was sat in place. Shop. See, the religious leaders of the day thought it was done. They set it in place, and sometimes the devil wants to let you know, you know, what you did, it's sat for life now. You know, you're, you're this, you're that. This is never going to happen. But I'm telling you, yeah. Resurrection Sunday came, and that stone was rolled away, and the Holy Spirit wants someone to know you feel like things were set. You know, you were raised in such a family or things happened or all these things and you were, you just didn't get the right fair share. It was already set for you. But I'm telling you, God specializes in messed up, mixed up cases and dead situations that look difficult where the enemy says, there's no way you're getting out of this. And I heard this morning when I woke up, he said, the stone was set. But see, Jesus became a different stone. He became the cornerstone. He became the rock. And I'm telling you today, those limitations that are on you are coming off Come this on. day. And the Lord yes. says, I'm removing the stone, the stone of offense, the stone that kept you stumbling. People are going to get free from addictions and everything else. And I'm not preaching today, so I have no idea what he's preaching on. But bless you, honey. All right, better go. That was light. I don't want pink lips. I don't want to be called the hot lips preacher. Amen. <laughs> Whew. I think that was uh, Hulahan on MASH years ago. Hot lips or whatever. Uh, I, don't, I don't watch that stuff anymore. Anyway. I listen to the words that come burning, those preceding burning words from the hot lips of the Father. So just, just bow your head for a quick second. Father, we declare, hey, and decree under the witnesses, under the patriarchs that have gone before, we are surrounded with such a great living cloud of witnesses. It's behind that thin membrane. We are one body with many members. And today, Lord, as we speak of revealing the risen Jesus, he still speaks today. So Lord, I just release the spirit. I release the sounds and the vibrations of chain breaking freedom today. Today, if you hear his voice, hey, sapo sarane, do not harden your heart. Let the gardener in. The stone has been dislodged. Whew. Glory. Well, I had two walks this morning. Now, that's not Chinese food, even though I worked in a five-star Chinese restaurant. Walk is what? Word of knowledge. Walk. Um, I, I got up this morning, and I heard as clear as day, Rico. Rico. I said, Rico. I'm thinking, we did a little bit of missions, you know, in Puerto Rico. Do we have any Puerto Ricans here? I was thinking Puerto Rico. And I said, Lord, like, you know, like, I'm thinking like beans and rice and Jesus Christ. Or, you know, I'm trying to figure out what he's saying to me. I'm like, Rico, we just went to Puerto Rico. And, he, and, and then I heard him say, Rico act. And I'm like, you know, years ago I heard something. So what did I do? I went to Google. Google and the Holy Spirit make a balanced team. I hear and I search out a matter. So I put it in my phone, and it said in 1970, there was like a racketeering uh, thing by the DOJ, the Department of Justice, and it's all with like shady, hidden things. And what I felt as I prayed it out in the spirit is there are things being revealed right now that the Department of Justice is going to get a hold of, and it's going to whammy the devil. Yeah. Woo! Remember the honeymooners? Wham, bam, and you know, I mean, I'm telling you, the devil's going to go to the moon. Hey! The other thing the Lord took me to was Psalms 30. If we could put this up, Psalms 30, verse 5. And for the children and, you know, for the adults that act like children, one, one, uh, one mother said I have um, 
you know, four children. And they said, oh, four? Yes, uh, three kids and a husband. <laughs> so I usually just give a quick joke. What does Shaquille O'Neal and the Easter Bunny have in common? They both like to stuff baskets. All right, moving along here. Okay, Psalms, yeah, James liked that, yeah. <laughs> He'll wipe me out. Uh, Psalms 35, for his anger is but for a moment. And his favor, which is that uh, Hebrew word graces, is for a life. It's for your life too. Weeping, agony, pain may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Joy comes to those who have been mourning. He told me, this is for a few people here today. Ooh. So we're going to activate with a prophetic act, not a pathetic act, a prophetic act. Stand quickly. Everyone, just close your eyes. Raise your hands. And let's say this together. I receive a lifetime of favor. I've had mourning. I've had weeping. But Jesus brings joy in the morning. Jesus, I recommit my life to you. Please release me into this new season. The stone has been rolled away and I am free in Christ. Woo! Hey! Woo! As you're sitting down, you can impersonate a Pentecostal if you'd like. <laughs> and for those of you that have had reoccurring kidney stones, I always tell people stand on the word. The stone was rolled away. People have had kidney stones. That's painful. I hope I never, never go through that. But the stone was rolled away. Woo! So right now, Father, under your influence, we break demonic accusation. From fathers to sons, from mothers to, to sons and daughters. Father, we thank you right now today. Our focus is going to be the living Jesus. Ooh. And the fountains of waters. The ever living water. The artesian well. The spring of eternity. Yeah. The God that answers. Hey! By fire. My question to you, title, uh, I'll give you the title for those that are always looking for a title. Revealing Jesus. And then under that, under that you could put, he still speaks. Revealing Jesus. He still speaks. Our, our text today, if we could put that up, is Psalms 29, 1 through 11. And as you're turning there, I want to say we are entering into the days, if you realize it or not, of showdown and show and tell. How many remember show and tell? Did you guys have show and tell? Yeah. Yes. I mean, we, we were a little bit different because I'm like 45 minutes from New York and the teachers would have to say, watch what you bring to school. I remember in, in fifth grade, one kid brought a 22 without bullets. And he goes, well, this is what I see at home. So, no, 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 put that down. So, yeah. God is going to show. And God, through his body, is going to tell that he's good, that he's love, and he's returning to the earth for such a time as this. I just want to, I'm going to tell a story in just a minute. But let's just go back to everything our faith rests on. Let's put up, if we could, Matthew 1130. He's trying to say this. We need to get to a place of rest and peace. Ooh, we don't want to live under a curse. Simply put, the definition of a Bible curse, please write this down if you're taking notes, is the absence of the blessing. 
I don't want the absence of a blessing when Christ died for all. When he died, I died. When he arose, I arose. Woo! Would I just shake my leg a little more? Ha ha ha. Glory. We're, risen. We're, the, we're the risen body. We're the risen body of Jesus Christ. He said, come on to me, all who are weighed down, all that are heavy laden. Let's read this. For my yoke is easy. Oh, that's an agrarian, agrarian like a yoke, you know, you'd put around an oxen. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Ooh, okay. Listen to me, folks. The whole Christian message. This is Easter. I get it. But listen to me. The whole Christian, everything is with rest. One old granny goes, I wouldn't give you $5 for a religion you couldn't experience. Come on, man. We've got all these ways out there. But there's really one way. You got the Jehovah's knocking on doors. Oh, my. Now they're tricking us. They're not dressed in black and white anymore. Remember, you could spot them about 600 yards. You know, if we could get them to deliver the mail, it would save millions. And you got the Mormons. You got the Seventh-day Adventists. That, you know, if you live next door to them, just cook bacon every day. They'll move. Uh, they're not allowed to eat ham. But you got all these religions and wonders and rules and regulations. And then you got the gold standard of them all, J.C., Jesus Christ. And what he imparts is a faith rest for those that believe. It's so important to do this. Do I have rest in my life? You're a living witness. If everyone else is razzle-dazzled and you're just like, I'm good. In him I live and I move and I have my being. Number one this risen Christ, we've got to be led by him. As many as are the sons of God, they're led by the spirit. That's where we have that traffic light for those, you know, red, green, and yellow. You're led, but you're also led by the living voice of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Please write this down. If you want to hear his voice, it's good to start with the voice of his word. One young man said, hey, I'm not hearing the voice of, of God in my life like you, Pastor, and some other people. I said, you want to know why? Yeah. Because you're not hearing the voice of his word. Well, how did you know I'm not reading the Bible? Because if you get in the, the, the logos, the ink, the written, it steps you into the voice. It's a romance. I don't know about you, but I'm in love with a man. It's not what you think. I'm in love with him. He, he pulled me out of death and hell. I went from drugs. I mean, one pastor said I went from LSD to G-O-D. Thank God I, I didn't go on uh, LSD, but I did just about everything else under the sun. But I'm telling you, man, he'll take you from, from junk to the palace. Ooh, where you marry Alice. Glory to God. The fear of the Lord with rest helps you to hear his voice. Some people say, I only hear the voice of God, that still small voice in the service. Why is that? Because you're worshiping him. Because you're placing a landing pad. I surrender all. Your phone doesn't exist. You're on your knees, which makes you as tall as trees. All the distractions go. I surrender. Then the fountain starts coming. And then the Lord, my child, I love you. But during the week, it get cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. Got the kids at soccer, got the dinner, got the this, I got the that, you know. You have to take time to put Jesus Christ first. Ooh, 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 ooh. If you treasure, please write this down. If you treasure what God treasures, you'll have spiritual treasure on earth and heaven, and you'll have natural treasure. The blessing of the Lord makes a man rich, and he adds no sorrow to it. Rich in the Hebrew means just a full supply. 
Poverty, uh, which is a curse of the law, and sickness is too, and spiritual death. But we said the, a curse really is the absence of the blessing. Cursed is every man that dieth on a tree. That was Jesus. He took it for us, folks. Turn your neighbor and say, he took it for us. He took it for us. So you can have health. You can have faith. You can have rest. It's not just rest during day. You, yeah, oh, I feel great during the day, but I can't sleep at night. Listen, folks, he paid for rest day and night. There's a rest at night. My head hits the pillow and... <laughs> Now, I wish I prayed in tongues and glowed in the dark like, like you think, but I don't. But have rest at night and have rest by day. He says, I give my beloved sweet rest. I give my beloved sweet sleep. How many want to claim a greater rest at night? You can't go, you know, to bed at night thinking about the bills and, you know, come on. You know, if you're a farmer, come on, Betsy, give. <laughs> the baby's got to live, you know. <laughs> I'm a low on the milk here, you know. You just, you, you turn, you're casting all your cares on him. And Peter, if you cast them on him, he's got them. Ooh, Shabbat. We're going to go in our message today, but I want you to write a few things down. Wigglesworth, one of the greatest apostles of faith, said, faith grows legs. Faith grows legs. Shoo! The fear of the Lord is to love what he loves and hate what he hates. When you're on Psalms 139.16, which is the books about us. He's written a, a, a novel, a, a masterpiece, so to speak, about every one of us. When you're on your books, when you're doing what he's asked you to do, the blueprints of this earth, you have rest. Rest is a reward, just like I'd give Duchess a Scooby snack. You know, <laughs> I've never seen a dog ever turn down beef or bologna or hot dogs, especially pot roast. I mean, I think they're carnivore keto, you know, they just, I, I, Thanksgiving, like I was like 13, I was just like cutting all, you know, you know, remember those electric knives? I, was, I did an experiment with my golden retriever. He's got to come to a point where this, this, this dog's full. Throw him a big slug. Five minutes later, throw him another. And he just kept going. You know, imagine if we did that with a word, an insatiable hunger. We'd be raising the dead, healing the sick, and casting out car salesmen. I've never seen a dog just say, like, oh, no, I'm good, I'm good. No, they'll, they'll eat till they, like, roll over. Yeah, yeah. We need to be as hungry as a blind dog in a meat factory. Those that hunger and thirst for righteousness, Jesus said, will be filled. Woo! First church of the filled up. Glory to God. But the fear of the Lord is what gives us rest. Rest is a reward if you want to put that down. See, Hebrews chapter 4, and we're going to go in the voice of God in a minute, but Hebrews chapter 4 says make every effort, every effort, say that, every effort to enter into the rest of God. And then it says, but there's a labor into the rest of God. Now, it's talking about rest as in being static or not working. And then it talks about a labor. It, it, it's like, how do you reconcile that? I'll tell you. The rest of God is a reward for walking with him. When you're in the yoke, you go where he goes. It's like, turn. You go where he goes. So when he says, my yoke's easy, it's because you're, you're, you didn't pull your little beady head out of that yoke. <laughs> you're, you're going with him. Seriously. If you're traveling with JC, you're never going to get a ticket. I'm serious. You're, ne you're traveling with righteousness. So his yoke's easy and his burden is truly light. Jesus said, unless you deny yourself and pick up your cross and follow me, you can have nothing to do with me. Picking up the cross in the Greek, a lot of people don't realize this, is the exact definition of doing on this earth what you're called to do. The denying of your flesh is trading it as a faith exchange for the plans of God. 
So what Jesus is saying, unless you're willing to die to your plans, your carnal ways, and follow my plan, which is totally better than your loser plan, you can't walk with me. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let's give the ghetto version. Dude, if you don't do it my way, your paths, you're going to lose. He's literally saying, if you want to follow me and be in my disciple, you have to deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow me. Oh, I, and if you do the crazy things, because when you follow him, he's like crazy. After all, he told me to come out here in my 40s and be a youth leader for no money. That was crazy as a daisy. My wife's making 40 bucks an hour. I'm a contractor. And we came out here on a love off. Man, it was, we were so poor, we couldn't even pay attention. But look at us now. Please understand something. Oh, boy, I feel chicken skin on this. That's, that's the anointing. That's stuff bumps. How do I say this, Lord? The greatest way to get ahead is to go backwards. You're in David's sling. Okay. Now, a sling on that day was kind of like this. So let's say a wrist rocket or today's elastic. You know, you're in the sling and you go back and you go back and it's tense. Oh, I'm tense. You let it go. Then you hit your assignment. The giants go down. The way up is the way down. You want to gain your life? Jesus said, lose your life. You want to be prosperous? Give it away. You want to live? Die. Yeah. It's opposite. You want victory? Wave a white flag. Oh, uh, that makes no complete sense to me. Yeah, you got to get in the club and be born again. Unless the seed goes into the soil and a few good Christians, I kind of crunch you and trample on you, misunderstand you, you abide it alone forever. You're not getting into the gates of heaven until you die, till you become like a child. I don't know. All I know is my daddy's greater than yours. My daddy can beat your daddy up. Just, just, just you're, you're relying on daddy. Rely on daddy. So to hear his voice, we have to obey him, love him. We have to be in rest, folks, for what's coming. There's a separation. There's a judgment. There's a revealing of corruption. There's a shifty shift to shift. I'm telling you, there's things that are going to happen. There's things that are going to shock people in the days ahead. That's what Rico was also for. Let's just put up our main text right now. It is uh, Psalms 29. It's actually the whole chapter, but I'm going to tell you a story out of this that's good. First, I'm going to read it. All right. If you're under 18 with your Apple phone, just use your Apple phone as your Bible. I've never met anyone under 20 that had an Android. I don't know what it is. If you've got an Android, God bless you. You're going to heaven. All right. <laughs> It's the apple that started all this craziness. Let's be real about it. I'm joking. I'm joking. Psalms 29. Give unto the Lord, O you mighty ones. Now in the Hebrew, mighty ones is angels. It's not even like a controversial thing. It, it's angels. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Forte, strength. It is key that we give God glory. When we try to take it upon ourselves and make ourselves our reputation, we lose ourselves. And you remember the story of John Paul Jackson with the Kansas City Prophets. Everything's going great. They asked for this big interview. They said, we'll be kind. They absolutely destroyed him. I mean, you know how the news can do that. Yeah. He's crying. The church is crumbling. Uh, people have black eyes. And it was really kind of slanted. So he goes and he fasts and prays and says, Jesus, they, they're destroying our ministry. All I did is tell the truth, and they, they, they slanted everything. Guess what John Paul Jackson heard? You, John, made yourself of reputation, trying to glorify yourself in the news, in the newspapers. I haven't called you to that. I made myself of no reputation. He repented. Woe unto you when all men speak well of you. If you just have to be Mr. Popular, you know, it just, you're not going to be promoted. 
You have to go against the grain because living a Christian life is the hardest thing you could ever do. I mean, you, you don't want to be a chameleon. Yes to this crowd, and I agree with you, and I understand your point of view. No, I don't. Narrow is the way, and few go through. Broad is the way. If you're a chameleon, you don't even get the raise. Why? Well, I couldn't find him. Well, bad joke. Okay, moving right along. Number two, give unto the Lord glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. It says without holiness, you won't see God. Three, the voice of the Lord is over the waters. Ooh, I remember I grew up on dun, 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 smoke on the wall. Don't look so sanctimonious. Purple or deep purple is also royalty. Jesus is the deepest deep and the purplest purple. He's the real smoke. He's holy smoke. Oh, all these songs are just takeoffs of the true and the living God. When I get into worship with Willie sometimes and he comes over, we got some smoke on our couch and it'd be purple. Woo. It's holy smoke. Hey! The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. Now, my German shepherd's like 100 pounds almost. And she's tough. Oh, she'll go up to any, she'll go up to a whole pack of dogs. We'll back down. She's in the living room. Least little bit of thunder and lightning comes. <laughs> She's trying to crawl under the couch. Her butt doesn't fit. The couch is lifting up. Thunder. And there's something about thunder and lightning. How does it scare you as a little kid? It's just something about fire. It, it, it says it, it, it comes from the hands of God. It says that. He says he holds the waters in the palms of his hand. Go figure. He's a big God. Ooh. The Lord is over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The rainbow, the lightning, the thunder, even the earthquakes can reveal, hey, I'm God. Are you right with me? Come on. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. Ooh. Yes, the Lord splinters the cedars of Lebanon. Shaka Bahad. Six. He makes them also skip like a calf. Ooh. Ooh. Let's go down here. Eight. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The, uh, the Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth. Ooh. And strips the forest bare. And in his temple, everyone says, glory. Ooh, the first thing the Lord said to me, I came in the kingdom on January 13th of 1985. Everyone knows their birth date. But you say to some people, when were you reborn? And, uh, well, see, I was born a Christian. No, you were born a heathen. Let's keep it real. Your, 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 your daddy's the devil. Oh, you can't say that. That's not politically correct. Your mama's the devil. Your daddy's the devil. If you're not born again, you're not in the family. Come join the family. Jesus said in John 3, 3, unless you are reborn, unless you're born again, unless your father birthed, you can't get in. You must, Nicodemus or Nick. Nick, hey, dude, you must be born again. Raise your hand if you've been born again. Okay. Now put your hands down. Raise your hand if you want to go to hell. I didn't think, I'd never get anyone. Sometimes there's like a manic depressant. Oh, I want out. You know, I'm like, no, you don't. You know, you're, just, you're confused. You settle that today at the end of the message. Say, you know what? Hell is hot. It's fire and it's brimstone. I think streets of gold are better. John 3.3 3 is the entrance to all eternal life. You believe on Jesus. When he died, I should have died. I should have been on the cross. He was my substitute. If you believe on him and you walk with him, you have eternal life. Man, a step away from God's a step down, brother. Woo! God is good. So let's go to Psalms 29.3. How many have heard of prophet teacher Bobby Connor? 
I love it when the scriptures come alive. Woo! Glory. He said, God, what do you want me to preach on um, to this uh, church? And he said, Bobby, I want you to preach on my voice. Hearing my voice. He said, it's so important in these days for people to hear my voice. How many agree? How about you're in a relationship with someone? You ready for this? You're in a relationship with somebody. Remember, you know, like, oh, I mean, you look your best. You put your cologne on, clean your car out. You know, you're trying to make an impression. You're trying to bamboozle them to marrying you, right? You know, we know how that was. She thought that was funny. Hey, what, what does that laugh mean? Is there any, I hope there's nothing behind that laugh. But anyway, moving right along. Yeah, you put your best foot forward. You really do. You hold the door, you ask her what she wants to eat, what she wants to see, if you can find a good movie. You know what I mean? It's like when a man loves a woman, right? But could you imagine your date? Let's say you had Chinese food, and then you went to a really nice movie, which is hard to find, and you didn't talk. How can you go out on a date? Okay, let's, back in the 70s, it was like you were going steady. Now that they don't even have that, like nothing steady, you know. So, like, say you're married. Say you're married. You don't talk. Um, like, even a doofus would say, like, how do you have a relationship without talking? My sheep hear my voice. And a stranger's voice, they will not follow. Ooh, if you don't hear his voice, baby, that's an indictment. My sheep hear my voice. And a kooky stranger's voice they're not going to listen to. At least be led by the word, if you haven't developed the voice yet, or at least develop the sensitivity to be led by the spirit. It says as many are the sons of God, they're led by the spirit. This is how you do it. You do the, the word, the voice of his word. It's pre-anointed, it's approved, it's him, because he's the word. And then you go to being led by a spirit. Ooh, red light, green light, yellow. I have a check mark or a velvety piece. Peace is the umpire of a heart. And then you start moving through hunger and thirst into hearing God. You kind of back away for those meals. And you start worshiping the Lord. And all of a sudden, that still small voice, it's like a whisper in the night, comes to you. The voice of the enemy and the voice of the world is loud. But the voice of God is that flat, still, small. It seems like a, write this down, it will seem like a reoccurring thought. That reoccurring thought is the Lord speaking to you. And when you start to develop the art of hearing God, the voice you yield to, the intuitions that you say, I'm going to step out on, become louder. It's like he turns up the, the volume when you start... You know what I'm saying? Like, like my friend was best man at my wedding. Uh, he had the acute word of knowledge. And I'm like, dude, I want that. You hear God. It's like, hey, there's somebody here today, you know, blah, 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 blah. And they're like, hey, that's me. How did you know? Word of knowledge. W-O-K. So I said, how did you develop that word of knowledge? And he said, I got a little pen and a little booklet and I put it in here. That's why I pass those booklets out. And every time I had an impression or a thought from heaven or I thought it was heaven, I would do it. He goes, just do it. So I got a pen. I got a little thing. I'm at this gas station. Now, now remember, I'm like 45 minutes from Manhattan. People are just loco, you know? And there's this old grandma, innocent looking, you know? But she's kind of like walking like, you know, she was wrestling with Hulk Hogan, you know? Kind of all, you know? And uh, I said, hey, ma'am, uh, can I lay hands on you and pray for you? You get away from me! I'm carrying a gun! I'm like, oh, okay, okay, you know? You know, pe people don't know, like, you know, can I lay hands on you? They, they're thinking the purse, <laughs> a withdrawal. <laughs> so I got rejected. I was a big guy, maybe a little scary with my sunglasses, but, you know, I, I, I kept stepping out. And you know what? I started developing the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord dwells in you. You have to learn how to take the frequency and tune it in. Just like you have patience for the radio. Well, I'm like dating myself again, you know, you know, now it's like a little different, but it's, you know, the principle of what it is. Hang in there. Woo. Let's just go to 29.3. Let's put that up. 29.3. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. 
So Bobby kind of goes, so Lord, do you want me to talk about your voice and how important it is in these last days to, to have peace and have rest and not to be rattled by the failures and the things that are going to happen? Maybe the money system might come down, insurance companies might go broke. Uh, you're going to need rest. You're going to need to hear him. You're going to need to be led. He said, Bobby, it's in Psalms 29.3. So he opened it up and it said, the voice of the Lord is over the waters. So guess what Bobby Connor does, being a prophet and a teacher? He, he meditates. Uh, please write this down. To meditate in the Hebrew means to chew on. You ever see somebody like just like in a restaurant, they haven't eaten for a week, and they're just chomping on something? They look like a camel with buck teeth. I mean, they're hungry. You have to just chomp on that. You have to ch just chew it and digest it. And meditate is to mutter. So he's muttering. He's speaking this verse back and forth. He just keeps saying with his Bible open, the voice of the Lord over many waters. And guess what happens to Bobby Connor? If you know Bobby, he's crazy. Guess what happens to Bobby Connor? I'm not making this up. Okay. He looks down at it and all of a sudden, Water comes right out of the Bible, hits him in the face. Now, I don't believe that. Really? You believe the, the, the election wasn't rigged. You believe the earth is flat. You believe worse things. Do you have any flat earthers? No, don't reveal yourself. What I'm saying is... <laughs> you know, I talk to those guys. I don't understand those guys. I said, like, can you prove it? Yeah. There's no tickets you know, regular tickets on the airlines to Antarctica. I said, dude, there's no hotels. There's just penguins and polar bears. Can you give me a better defense than that? We're not going there. It happened is all I'm saying. This is the same Bobby Connor that when he was under the anointing, say under the anointing, under God's presence, where, and if you believe he made Adam and Eve, you can believe he could do miracles. If you believe he created the heavens, which he did, and they're like, they're not up there like with chains or string. He created gravity. I mean, that, that's kind of cool. Just something floating. It's cool. You know what I mean? I'm just telling you. So he's under the anointing and he said, I, I drank too much coffee. I got to go out and uh, go to the bathroom quick. I'll be right back. So he's walking by this girl. He's just a jokester. And he, he looked at her, she had beautiful hair. He just put his hand on her hair and says, hair be green, just joking. And he lifts his hand off and exactly where his uh, handprint is, it's all green. And she's like, ah, that's a woman's nightmare. Hey, you have green hair. Where'd you go to a rave? No, church. I'm going to figure that one out. And the Lord said, Bobby, if you're under the anointing to minister you get what you say, according to Mark 11, 23 and 24. That's not just like when he said, whatsoever you shall, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and not doubt in his heart or his spirit. Whatever he says shall come to pass. He'll have whatever he says. Ooh, when you're under the anointing, you can bless and you can curse. When you're not under the anointing, you can't always bless as much, but it's easy to curse. Think about it. It's easy to go downhill. No one coasts like on the level. Coasting is always a downgrade. So water came all over his face. And what a service they had. What does water do? What does the voice of God do? Let's flip to Genesis 1 2. The voice of God hovered over the deep. Listen to me. If you're a shallow Christian, Holy Spirit's not going to hover over you. Even a wood stove needs some things in it to give off some BTUs, right? Come on, folks, listen to me. The voice of God hovered over the deep. Ooh, let's see this right here. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was brooding, is one of the words in Hebrew, or hovering over the face of the waters. Now, he, he, Hebrew, the Hebraic words have a numerical value and a lot of times pictures. That's a meaning of when it says hovering, of like a hen sitting on eggs to incubate it or to, to, bring it, to, to bring it forth, okay? So when we speak, the Holy Spirit accomplishes when it's his will. 
Life come into that body. Life can come into that body. I command the healing anointing to come. The Holy Spirit's waiting for you to speak the word. He's hovering over situations in your family. He's hovering over your finances. He's hovering over your grandchildren. He's hovering over that dumb, stupid husband that just doesn't get it. But that, that, that chicken is going to hang out and brood. Don't look to the left or right. You give yourself away. But what does his voice do biblically? It scatters darkness. Let there be light. Better than Spider-Man. And light was. If light came, darkness goes. What does his voice do? It created new things. Ooh. What does his voice do? It brings light, growth, and eternal blessing. What does his voice do? It incubates. Thus like the picture of the hen. The anointing waits for the voice command. Just like in Genesis today. Please write this down. The anointing is voice activated. My address in the spirit is not 121. Yeah, she's like, yeah, you don't want your house bombed, you know. It's not 121. It's this. My tongue. Ooh, folks. James, Dr. James, I call him, Book of James. He says the tongue is the rudder that, shears, that, that steers the ship. I call it the battleship. You could be the love boat, cruise. I'm the battleship. I got some big guns. All right, there's some demons over there. Give them the 19 inchers. Oh, I'm just on the love boat. No, you're on a battle cruiser if you're in the kingdom of God. You, the day you said yes to Jesus Christ, he put you in war, baby. He put you in war. If you're on the love boat, repent. Turn off as my stomach turns and all these crazy sin to the max things and get on the aircraft carrier. His voice incubates. The anointing waits for the voice command. Remember the Roman soldier, and we just saw this, I just saw the other night, um, um, the Chosen. And, uh, you know, the centurion's like, you don't need to come to my house. I'm a Gentile. Just speak the word, and it will happen. And he says his kid was healed. He said, I'm a man under authority. I understand authority because I have understanding because I stand under authority. If you're that dancing sheep, whoo, I'm free in Christ, but I don't tithe. I don't go to church. Ha, 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 I'm free. No, you're an idiot. <laughs> Repent and be faithful. Because if you want faith, Kevin went to heaven. And he said, you know, most of my body wants faith and they don't have it. He said, I'll give you a secret, Kevin. He said, what is it, Lord? It's impossible to have faith without being faithful, without being under authority. Oh, yeah, everyone. See, Proverbs says everyone proclaims his own faithfulness, but a faithful servant, how hard it is to find. Everyone wants greasy grace without responsibility. Well, <laughs> it's just too much to <laughs> come to church. <laughs> tithe costs me too much. If you don't tithe, you can have the dollar store annoying over your life, buddy. How many have had that? I've, I've had that. I don't want that. I'm serious. You, you, you take what the Lord gave you, bring it back to him. He said, I'll just blow it up. I'll make it really big and we'll be amigos. Isn't that good? Don't, don't, don't be cheapo. Don't be El Cheapo. You don't want the El Cheapo anointing. You want the El Sheepo anointing. Amen. <laughs> you know, a lot of Christians are dry. I'm just going to be real. I'm going to be real. There's no rest. There's no peace. And they're dry. They're frustrated. They're dry because they're not experiencing the water of the word. That night, the water, the artesian well in Bobby Condor's service just started coming on everyone. Then he goes to the round table once a year, and Bobby's like, okay, I'm not going to tell people this. This is a hard stretch, and I, I want to be liked, you know? So he's at a round table at Morningstar, and the Lord goes, hey, Bobby, I want you to share that with these prophets. He's like, uh, no, they're not going to believe that. He's like, no, I want you to share that. Whew. Please write this down. What you're ashamed of will not work for you. Oh, yeah. He said, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. 
on the day of judgment. Try to be cool, try to be accepted, it's compromising, and then you go up before him. What, what would you do? Have him be faithful to who is faithful and true? I'm telling you, man. He's either going to say, I know you, come in, or I don't know you, goodbye. Ooh, that's serious. Every one of us are going to pay taxes, go to Walmart, and go to the judgment seat of Christ one day. I'm telling you, or the great white throne. I'm telling you, or the dollar store, whichever. But I'm telling you, this is inevitable. And you want God to know you. So at the round table, he goes, well, it's my turn. He goes, and he goes, let's go to Psalms 29.3. And there's the owner of charisma. And he's like sitting next to him. And you want to be respectful, you know? So what happens is, yeah, not strange. It sounds like strange. It's like, but um, he gives Psalms 29.3, and he says, The voice of the Lord is over the waters, and the glory of God thunders, and the Lord is over many waters. And all of a sudden, out of his Bible, he gets sprayed, and, and so does his friend. And they're looking at that Bible. Is there a squirt gun in there? Bobby, how'd you do that? He goes, this is a sign and a wonder. You're dry because you haven't experienced the supernatural waters of God. The old Pentecostals used to say, if you're empty and dry, look up to the sky. It's beginning to rain. Mucho jubia. It's beginning to rain. Woo. Glory to God. In a service, if you want the spirit of God to move, his voice must pierce the hearts of men and women first. If you want a move of God, you must, you can't pierce and push back darkness without first piercing the hearts of men. You can't do that. You have to be a little uncomfortable. You have to be a little convicted. You have to be like, ooh, here's the word. Here's the gold standard. And here am I. I need to come up a little bit. This isn't seeker sensitive where I tell you how good you are, how wonderful I love your hair. Oh, I just love your wife's hairdo. And oh, your kids are so well behaved. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Lie to both of those. You know what I'm saying? But like so many pastors just tell things that are not true to make people feel comfortable. But is it the truth? No, it's not the truth. Let's look at a few statements here that I wrote down. Ooh. Bobby Connor shared this. He said, I'm a lot harder, Bobby, to get along with than most preachers preach. He said, if you're going to walk with me, it's going to cost you holiness, separation, sanctification. And he said, the messages today are messages about me, but they're really not. It's like God understands your sin. God understands your problem. Have your best life now. Where's repentance? Where's sacrifice? Where's holiness? You can listen to the institutions of men, or you can go right here and listen to the voice of God through your pastor. This never changes. It stands on its all. Oh, look what just happened. Here's my book marker. It's my wife. Mwah. She's always watching me. <laughs> Conviction brings eviction. You're here to get challenged. You're here to get convicted. You're, you're, you're here to just have the spirit of change. Whoo. If you want Holy Spirit to be comfortable with you, you have to be uncomfortable. He's going to invoke change. He's going to say, hey, you know what? I don't like that. Eh, 86 that. We can't experience the fullness of God without the fear of God and his voice. I'll say that again. We can't experience the fullness of God without the fear of God and the voice of God. You know, it says uh, about the highway of holiness, even if a fool is found traveling on it, he becomes wise. Can I tell you something honestly? On the highway of holiness, it'd be like the German Autobahn. You're, like, you're in your Lamborghini in like six gear. And it just has no speed limit, whatever is reasonable and prudent. Well, if I'm over there, reasonable and prudent, 
maybe 215. I mean, it, it, it's a, it's a, I'm joking. It's kind of like, uh, you know, they, they let you go if you're safe. So who knows what that is? But let me, let me say this on, on, on the highway of holiness and please write this down. There's never a traffic jam. Few people travel it. Few people travel it. And even if a bozo is found on the highway of holiness, it says he's wise. He's wise. Woo. Please write this down. Such a nice, seeker-sensitive Easter. If you're more afraid of the devil than Jesus, you are deceived. Oh, oh, the devil's after me. Oh, and you got the walker with the tennis balls. <laughs> Mabel, you ain't outrunning those demons. Mabel, Gertrude, Hildred, you better turn around and take one of those tennis balls off the bottom and hit them like David. You got to bust up the devil. You've got to run towards your giant with your mouth moving. David ran towards his opposition with his mouth and his legs moving because faith grows legs. <laughs> this day, you big uncircumcised, say no covenant Philistine. Today, I'm going to make your head a bird feeder. You've come against me with a sword and a shield, but I come against you in the name of God. Woo, woo, shoo. Goliath's last words. I could have had a V8. <laughs> you run towards your impossible giants with your mouth moving. You release the word of the Lord, the anointing is hovering, waiting for the word to hook up. Amen? Yeah. Woo! Never run towards your giant or impossible situations with your mouth closed. Your rudder brings you into your destiny, the book of James says. Don't be afraid of the devil. He's a convicted felon. He's a malicious nut. He's crazy. He says he's been defeated. He's literally, you want a picture of this? The Hebrew is a picture. He's been defeated. I'm telling you, he has not a leg to stand on. He's a loser. He that is born of God overcomes. Please write this down. Faith makes the devil look small. But fear makes the devil look tall. I am not afraid of that whacked out former cherubim. You know the story about Lester Summerall. He's sleeping. And he wakes up. The devil himself is standing there. The devil himself. And his bed shifts across the room. Those old spring beds, you know, you turn, the, the, your wife would be like, will you be quiet? You remember those things? Those sort of, I hate the other at camp all the time. You can never sleep. You're creaking all night. And he looks at the devil and he says, in the name of Jesus, put it back. And all of a sudden his bed went right over the other side. And he went to sleep. That's not being afraid of the devil. You tell the devil to put your family back, put your finances back, put your relationships back. Whatsoever you ask in my name, that will I do. That Greek word ask means demand. Jesus literally said to his disciples, whatever you demand in my name, that will I do. You don't demand Jesus. You make a demand on the word and a covenant that's bound to it. Don't be more afraid of the devil than God. I'm afraid of God. I'm not going to be doing something crazy. You know what I'm saying? Amen. Raise your hand if you're learning. I mean, out of the Old Testament, which was an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, the, the rough realities, people don't even realize this theologically, he killed more through judgment in the Old Testament than he saved. Genesis 6-4. He wiped the earth out. And when he wiped the children out and um, the, the, the cattle and everything, it was his mercy because he wanted those territorial spirits to end. All living things wiped out. He wanted a brand new repress it. I mean, God's only mean, so to speak, in the Old Testament when the Israelites were going their own way. When the Israelites were behaving, God was like chillaxing. 
Let's look up Revelation 4.8. And a lot of people don't realize this. Some, sometimes I just hear preachers talk about love. All you need, it's like the Beatles. All you need is love. Well, I mean, love is the greatest. I'm not saying that. Love is here. You know, faith is under it. But, but let's see God's perspective eternally. Uh, Revelation 4.8 the four living creatures, each had six wings, were full, oh man, this is sci-fi, were full of eyes, sounds like an old date, full of eyes all around within, and they do not rest day or night saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Listen to this. For eternity, these winged creatures are going to say what? Holy, holy. And then they'll repeat it, and then they'll repeat it, and then they'll repeat it. I don't know if there's another three of them they've got for coffee breaks, or I don't know. This just goes on forever. Do you notice it doesn't say love, love, love? Do you notice it doesn't say joy, joy, joy? For some of you, it has to say mercy, mercy, mercy. For some of you, it'd have to say no tithe, no tithe, no tithe, no attendance, no attendance, free grace, cheap grace, cheap grace. He says holy. See, he said if you love me, you'll obey me. You can enter weak, you can enter sick, but you can't enter if you're not born again. And to the internet army that's watching us, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, tell your neighbors, are you born again? Are you born again? Are you born again? Kevin Zeta, who I love, he is like in this denominational church. This little dude had like a little tiny pen on him and they said, you must be born again. Kevin's like, what does that mean? Now look at where he's at today. How about the person responsible for that little pin? You must be born again. I had a little paint key with a thousand Benjamin colors in it. And as you took it out of its case, a little, you know, wheel, as you took it out of the case, down there, you, you would see John 3, 3, you can ask me. And I'm working in mansions. Oh, yeah, that's, that's the way to get into heaven. You don't want to go to hell, do you? Oh, no, no. Well, let's just pray. Give me your hand. Put it down. Lord, I just go right. I just grab their hand like a used car sale. I just go right into it. Now, if it roots, it's good. If it doesn't, well, they're on their way to hell anyway, right? I mean, just come on, man. I'm just get aggressive. The kingdom of God suffers violence. The violent take it by force. So realize, it says holy, holy, holy. In the New Testament, says without holiness, you won't see me. Hello, you won't see me. It says that. It says that. You can either, you can even, like I said, you can go sick to heaven. You can even go to heaven with cirrhosis of the giver, not tithing. But you're not going to have treasure in heaven. What you, when, the, when you sow to the widow, when you sow to the orphan, the prisoner, when you sow to people that are destitute, you're laying up treasure in heaven. Well, I just might. You know, some of you, you're, this is your theology. I'll be real with you. I, I keep it real, and you know it. Your theology is this. My name is Davy Crockett. The money stays in my pocket. Well, you know what? You're not going to have treasure. You're not going to have enduring wealth. You're going to have it down here. Yeah, I want enduring wealth. We preach prosperity, but it's kingdom wealth for kingdom purpose. Because somebody's on the other side of your prayer, somebody's on the other side of your obedience, and it means an eternity. Just a little pin! You must be born again! We've got a general in God's army. Think about that. Who, who, who led Billy Graham to the Lord? Think about that. You participate in the rewards. Ooh, think about these things. We're going to be wrapping this up. Ooh, but this is what um, this very anointed prophet was told, and this opened up my eyes. It says that Hillel or Lucifer fell, and why did he fall? Why did he fall? Who knows? But it says in Ezekiel, by reason of, well, we know his pride, but it also says by reason of his merchandising, his trafficking. It says that, and that's, that's blind to us. What is merchandising? What, is, what are these things? I'm going to tell you what they are. This is what God had said to Bobby Connor. Please write this down. If you're in a five-fold ministry, that means folding the devil five different ways. <laughs> That's a true five-folder. They fold up the devil five different ways. I got the power! Hey! Come on. He said, Bobby... The highest form of treason. Listen to this. The highest form of treason as a leader, as a, an Ephesians like 4.11. The highest form of treason is winning people over to me and then 
having them follow you and their eyes on you. It caused Hillel to fall. He was prideful and wanted the glory. He wanted to be just like I five times. I will be like God. I will ascend above the clouds. I will, I, 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 I. And it was, I. It was about him. It was pride. So it says by, in Ezekiel, it says by reason of Hillel's or Lucifer's trafficking or merchandise. And folks, I'll be honest with you. There was no revenue back then. It was a spiritual realm. It can't mean money as some people teach. John Finn went to heaven. And the Lord said in Ezekiel, where it says, by reason of thy merchandising, it was the same thing Absalom did to King David. He stood at the gate and he brought people over to his influence because he was against and jealous of the power of his father. So what is merchandising his anointing? It's gathering things and money and people to yourself because you want the glory. You want to be the top dog. Hey, you want to be the top dog here? Just come and see me. I'll let you be the top dog for a week. You'll be coming to my office with your tail trimmed. Arr, 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 I don't want to be top dog. Yeah, it's, you take some of those arrows. The highest realm of treason is winning disciples for Christ and then having them follow you. I say, whatever I say from this pulpit, if it doesn't line up, I'm fine with that. You don't have to agree with me on everything, but you better agree on John 3.3. 3. You better agree that healing and tongues and salvation is for today. And by grace you're saved through faith and not of works. We don't have to believe the main things are the main things. And the plain things are the plain things. You have to have the blood of Jesus. You have to have forgiveness of sins. But some of these other things, we're going to have little, little different ways about us. That doesn't matter. You're not to follow me. You're to follow Jesus Christ. You're to follow this. And if I differ from this, come and tell me. I've been wrong before. One preacher said, I only made one mistake. I thought I was wrong and I was right. Well, that's not good. All right. You do not want to lead someone to Christ and then have them always getting a word from you, always asking you what you think. You get them a concordance. You get them a Bible and you stop spoon feeding them and say, you grow and you rely on the Lord because I'm not your Samuel. People ask me, uh, Pastor Wayne, can you expound on this scripture? Do you have a smartphone in Google? Go to a commentary. And then after you read the commentary, ask the Lord what parts of that is good or true. What do, you, what do you weigh out in your spirit with weights and balances? God says he loves just weights and balances. You have to learn to ride. You have to learn to run. Maybe you'll trip. Maybe your training wheels come off. But eventually you'll be cycling right along. Has this uh, helped anyone? Yes. Don't be afraid more of the devil than God. The fear of the Lord is clean. It says it's a stretched over canopy. It's a covering of your life. I am not your covering, yo. I am not your cheap covering, okay? There's a sense of covering here as a church institution where we all minister to each other. We all have psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. We all prophesy. This isn't the Wayne and Lisa show, but there's a form of covering and accountability with the ecclesia, the local church. But Jesus is your real covering. Don't follow me. Don't follow me. You might get a speeding ticket. No, I was joking. <laughs> Just got that brand new Mustang GT electric car. Good Lord, have mercy on me. Whew, 600 pounds of torque. Whew, I can outrun the Antichrist. Whew. I'm telling I think it's fast. They said zero, I'm trying to save money and be economical. I'm thinking it's going to be like Greg's Prius, zero to 60 and a half an hour. And it's, it's, it's zero. I'm just joking. <laughs> I, I didn't like Priuses until they came out with a brand new one. You know, the new one's really cool looking. But it's 0 to 60 in like 3.7 seconds. And I'm like, whew, that thing is fast. All right, here we go. We, we love you guys. We're glad you're here. I'm not your covering. Don't follow me. Now, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. I ain't as good as Paul. Follow the word. Follow the spirit. 
and eat the hay and spit out the stubble. I'm not your Holy Spirit. I want your eyes on him who bought Amen. you. Amen. Jesus is the Lord, and he gets all the glory. Um, would you turn the lights on down low? We just want to open it up to the Holy Spirit, what yeah. he wants to do. Thank you, honey, for that wonderful <sighs> message. But this is all about him this morning and your walk with him, your walk, hey. your love relationship. Our eyes are on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. It starts with him and it ends with him. Yes. You're going to stand before him. He, he breath, breathe life into you as a seed and put you in your mother's womb. Come on. And you will stand before him someday again and give an account on everything. Yes. And so we want to make sure that, Willie, will you and the team come on up? We want to make sure that everyone that's here knows him intimately. You know, we can all get in, caught in religion mm. and works, but God doesn't want you to be religious here. He wants relationship with each one of us. He wants intimacy. Yes. And he wants to, in us, he wants to see. He knows the real deal, what's deep down inside. He knows the struggles, the sin, the pain, the hurt, what you're going through. Yes. And Jesus, he says, I came to give you life today and give yes. you life more abundantly. Whoa. When he speaks, we want to hear his voice. Yes. You want to hear his command. You want to hear the revelation that he gives. So um, if there's anyone in this room that are watching online and you have not made Jesus the Lord of your life, this is the day on this beautiful resurrection. You know, Sunday. with every head bowed, maybe if we can just put one row of lights overhead, but with every, every head bowed, no one, you know, Marco Polo peeking. Uh, I just really want an honor system here. Everyone just bow your heads. If you either want to re- uh, commit your life, reaffirm your faith, or you want to come to him for the very first time it, on the internet. We've got like a 1,300 uh, subscribers. And here, just raise your hand quickly and put it down. God's going to see your hand. I see that hand. There, I, see, I see quite a few hands. It's good. It's really good to get things right. God wants you to settle accounts every night. It's so good. He said... Above all things, I wish that you will prosper and be in health. This is First John, even as your soul prospers. He's a God that cares body, soul, and spirit. The total man is to be blessed on this earth and healed and have a full amount of revenue and then a mansion in heaven. It's just so good. Religion makes God this, this cheapskate, this angry man. That's not the living God. Folks, if you think your sex before marriage and your raves and your crack and sniffing glue and huffing's better, I differ with you. I've done some of those things. And the most high is the greatest high you'll ever have. Amen. He's the true gospel. He's not fentanyl. He's not cocaine. He's not crack. He's above all those things. He's the covenant-keeping God who sits on the circle of the earth in the sides of the north and says, that little earth, um, that's my footstool. God is God and you are not. Let's just give him some reverence right now. So just say this. If you're doing this for the very first time, you can all say it or you can say it quietly in your heart. You can say, Jesus, I need you. Let's say that together, Lisa. Let's back Jesus, up. I need you. I acknowledge today that I can't make it without your help. You died for me on the cross for all my sins. And I'm asking your blood to cover everything today. Thank you for, for your forgiveness. I want to know you. I want to walk with you. I don't want religion. I want a relationship with you. Yes. That's alive. It's real. So today, Holy Spirit, help me. Come in my heart, Lord. Thank you for this new day, this new beginning. The old has passed away, and all things are becoming new. Teach me how to walk yes. and talk with you sure. daily. And I'll go.
go to you someday and lay all my crowns at your feet, for you are worthy. Hallelujah. I believe there's someone or someones today. You're that someone. God so loved the world that he gave his life. Oh. That whosoever, you're that whosoever today, whosoever would believe in him would have life and life more abundantly, everlasting life. Yes, yes, yes. So, Father, I pray the fire of God, the Holy Spirit, that you would take people on a deep journey with you, that your word, your living word, your written word will become alive. That, Father, the old patterns, the old sins, the old addictions, the old ways are being broken off this day. And newness of life is coming. Thank you, you're setting people free in their bodies, in their minds, in their spirits. You're breaking bondages. And Jesus, that's what you came to do. You came to deliver people, all of those that were oppressed of the evil one. For God was with them. That's what you did. All oppression of the evil one, we say, be broken off of family. Yes. Be broken off of homes. Release. Be released in the name Hell. of Jesus. We bind up those circumstances right now. We curse unfruitful works of darkness through the root. And we release Lahayim, life on Easter. The stones been rolled away. Victories come in your way. Hey! Let's stand and let's worship the Lord in afterglow today. And I let's heard the Lord worship say, him. I heard the Lord say, I'm healing somebody with something to do with their lungs right now. So if that's you, just breathe in the spirit of the Almighty. It's a word of knowledge. Ruach the Kadesh. spirit of God is bringing breath and life to you. And we speak life to your lungs hey. right now. We drive out sickness and disease. And Father, I thank you that you're healing people of every hey. everything that they need this morning. Hallelujah. We love you. And Jesus loves yes. you. And this is a good day. We are at the river. We do things a little different. We're going to go in just a little bit of afterglow this morning. But if you need to come up and seal something and some of the prayer team, come on up. If you need prayer and you need that, just a, a touch of heaven today, we're going to be here to pray for you. But have a blessed time with all of your friends and family in Jesus' name. You, you and your wife also can pray too, okay? trying to exercise different people. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Glory. Okay. We love you. Blessings to everyone. God bless you all. Have a wonderful Amen. resurrection Amen. The grave Sunday. is empty. If you've been a first-time visitor, don't be a last-time visitor. We love you at the river. Shalom, shalom.